Hey there, this is Dan. And today I want to talk about a question that I got from a reader. So the question is, what Python projects should I build? I have no idea which ones would help me to grow to a point where I could put them on my resume slash GitHub and um, basically get me a job, right? Like what Python projects should you be working on to build up your portfolio so that you can get a job as a Python developer? And I think this is a great question because um, with modern software development, um, I think a lot of it is about building up, almost like building up that personal brand and um, getting some recognition where when you apply to when you apply somewhere, people are going to check out your portfolio. They're going to check out your GitHub. Maybe if you have a website, which I would highly recommend that you set something like that up, you know, like a blog um, where you have some programming tutorials. All of that is going to going to demonstrate to your potential employer that you are um, you are more advanced than other people. You're, you know, maybe more in a in a position of authority, and that's going to have a huge payoff for you, um, and it's going to help you find the job that you want. So, okay, so what Python projects should you build to start growing that portfolio, and also to learn the skills that you need to become a Python uh, <clears throat> Python developer, professional Python developer? So, um, what I'm thinking there is. If you just want something to show an employer, it might not matter as much as you think what kinds of projects you're putting on your GitHub. What will matter much more is just the way they are structured and what they look like in terms of code quality and if whether or not they're actually, you know, a little bit more substantial programs. So I've... Um, you know, I've gotten jobs in part of of the in, partly due to the um, you know kind of the, the 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 online resources that I created. You know, like some open source stuff that I did on GitHub, my website, and um, it really helped me earlier on in my career to actually get started, get the foot in the door. And then I've also spent um, you know a long time interviewing other engineers um, to to build out my team, where um, I was reviewing resumes and looking at people's portfolios. And so I feel like I can speak to, um, you know, what, what this stuff actually looks like behind the scenes and what people look at, what the hiring team looks for in uh, when they're reviewing a resume and taking a look at someone's uh, portfolio. So what I want to say there is um, please do a GitHub. It doesn't have to be GitHub. It could be anything else, you know, Bitbucket, GitLab. All of these are good. I would probably go with GitHub because it's the biggest one and it seems really stable. You can get free public repositories. So personally, I'm a GitHub kind of kind of guy when it comes to this stuff. But um, you know, pick pick your own thing. The most important thing is that it's easy to browse the code. Like it's so much better if you have a public, um, you know, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket portfolio versus um, just offering people like a zip file to download or maybe having a self-hosted uh, Git repository because the typical hiring team they're maybe not going to go through all of the steps necessary to actually look at your code. They just want to see some examples, right? And so what I was always looking for, and you know, my, me and my teammates, what we were looking for in those situations was for someone to have um, a little bit of code on their GitHub. It, doesn't have, it didn't have to be very many projects. So you know, if you have one or two like, good-looking, solid projects there, you don't actually need a ton of other stuff. Like actually get rid of the stuff that is not very substantial. And that's maybe just, you know, um, um, a testing script or at least don't feature it on your resume, right? Like the stuff you actually send over to to someone else, that is that should be something where, where you are proud of, of your code. Now, um, another thing you should not do is include projects that are just, you know, if you went through the Django tutorial, for example, I wouldn't necessarily send that out as, you know, as like, as a, a demo project that shows my employer what, what, what I can do, right? Like if you build a Django app or based on the tutorial, that's great. But um, just having that, some people just, you know, they go through a tutorial or they just, um, you know, fork a repo and maybe make like a one line change and then have that on, a, on their GitHub. And that doesn't tell me as much as uh, the person doing the hiring and the reviewing. In fact, maybe it tells me a little bit, you know, something negative about that person where I'm thinking, okay, um, why, you know, are you trying to, 
are they trying to cheat here? Like, did they just put up this code so that maybe some people are less technical? They would think they're a great programmer. So it could, that can backfire, right? On the other hand, you don't have to have um, a super complicated project or you don't have to have, you know, you don't need to start a popular open source project either. So if you have one, that's great, obviously, you know, you know but most people are not going to have that. And um, so it doesn't matter as much. Of course, it's a great asset, right? But it doesn't matter as much as, as you would think because most people don't have it. So um, pretty much anything is good. You know, if you have a little script, like if you did some like home automation stuff or whatever, like something you worked on, you know, like a spreadsheet exporter, like a little game you wrote, anything like that, um, if it's nice and polished, like you should look for like, what I would look for typically is like, okay, does this person, um, what, what does their code look like? You know, does, does it look quote unquote sloppy or is it, does it follow the Python code style guidelines? You know, does it follow PP8? Um, does, it, does it have like consistent formatting? Does it look like something that I would feel comfortable reading and maintaining if I was working with that person? Uh, later on, right? That's kind of the signal you want to give off here. Like you want to give, you want to create this impression that you're a very conscientious person and um, that you, you're you getting the details right, you know, that you're not only producing something, some program that, you know, does stuff, but that you actually get the details right, that you document the program. So something like having a really nice and clean readme file can also be a huge asset, right? Where you're showing people like, hey, I'm not just throwing this out there, but I understand that for other people to use my project, I need to explain to them what, what to do here, right? And this is kind of the vibe you want to go off, uh, you want to give off on your GitHub profile. Because as you're working with other people um, at, at, in a team at a company, it is so much better to have someone where, where they're thinking about the human factors in in software development, right? Like they're not just thinking about, oh yeah, you know, I wrote the algorithm. Like, you know, did you see here? Like the right number came out, but it's much more about, okay, well you wrote the right algorithm. How do you explain everyone else how that works? Like can, ev does everyone else, uh, you know, are the other people on your team able to, to actually use it for something useful? Like, did you not only solve the problem, but actually, you know, actually got your problem um, to, to uh, got, got your solution to the point where people are using it and where it's actually affecting people's lives and like what's actually affecting the, the company's um, success in a meaningful way, right? And, and that includes stuff like, okay, does, it, does, does your project have tests so that other people can make changes and um, there's at least some like kind of smoke test that finds out if there's, if there's like, a, um, you know, a, a huge breaking change. So that is great. Like anything that shows that you know how to write software in a more uh, practical and team-based setting, that's going to be a huge asset for when you're applying for a um, for a job, you know, and that includes stuff like having automated unit tests, having that set up so that they actually run automatically when you make a change on that GitHub page, um, having a good uh, readme for that project, you know, um, having like just the way you're explaining things, you know, are you giving people a good idea what this project is even about and how it could benefit your your user? And then another thing, if it's a more popular project, um, it's also kind of interesting to see how the people as maintainers interact with the people who um, create issues and stuff. And, um, you know, are they lashing out at people or do they get angry? Uh, do they never respond? Do they respond all the time? And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not saying like one is necessarily better than the other. Like uh, I get freely overwhelmed right now with some open source projects that I have and I just don't have the time to respond. So, you know, I wouldn't take this as seriously as a signal. But um, if you have a maintainer, you know, getting like really, really angry, in their in in the issues on their own project um, and and you know responding to people's pull requests very rudely then that would certainly give you a sign as the uh, as the interviewer that maybe that person is not so so great to work with in the long run you know so that this is this is what I'm going going at you know you want to give off the right vibe here and kind of create the right impression that you're going to be a fantastic person to work with um, in terms of um, in terms of uh, how much stuff do you need, you don't need a lot. And in terms of, you know, what Python projects you should build, um, also to train yourself to get the skills, you know, not only to have a portfolio, but also to train yourself to have the right skills. I think that'll also depend on ultimately on what you want to do. You know, if you want to be a data scientist, 
Well, then do some data analysis and write, you know, some nice scripts there, some nice programs that help you with that, and then put them on GitHub. If you want to get a job as a Python web developer, well, you know, then write um, like a basic uh, CRUD app, you know, create update delete app. Maybe you're using Django, maybe you're using some other framework, maybe you're using multiple frameworks to kind of show your expertise in a wide range of, of topics. And um, maybe you want to have something where you're doing a, uh, a web API, you know, a REST API, and you're putting that stuff together. And um, the project projects you're going to build there, they will depend on the type of of job that you're going after, you know, if you're um, um, obviously, you know, if you're if you're trying to get a job as a back end developer versus more of a front end person, you know, the, the tools that you would use would be completely different. I think what in general makes a nice portfolio piece for anyone is if, if you have one or two libraries that are actually available on PyPI, the Python package repository, you know, if you can put that together, um, that all also shows that you're going um, above and beyond the call of duty here. And, um, and you're creating value for the rest of the Python community. So this is always something that's, that's nice to see, you know. And um, well, I hope this gives you a better idea of the sort of things you should add to your portfolio, the sort of programs and projects you should build to improve your Python skills and then have something you can put, put in your portfolio. And if you do all of these things, then you will have a much better chance at uh, you know attracting employers and getting responses from them because it's going to put you so much above the rest of the pack you know if you have this stuff because most people don't most applicants that I've seen they they don't do this they don't care about it or they have you know just some other project that they forked and copied over so if you actually have some programs that provide value that look good and that make you look like a um, like a uh, somebody we can you could rely on or you know somebody that would be nice to work with that would really add um, a lot of value to the team or the company then that's the kind of signal you want to give off all right so if you have any more questions about this leave a comment below and uh, thanks for asking the question <laughs>